We're here in Savannah, Georgia. This is the Maris Denver coming down the river about to dock. Today I'm working cargo for the ship so that crew can get much needed rest. Let's talk about some of the responsibilities of the mate on watch during cargo operations. So one of the most important things we do on cargo watch is check the mooring lines, make sure they're tight. These modern ships for the most part have uh, automatic tensioning. So here's an example. You have your uh, tension settings here. This controls um, how much tension and kilonewtons uh, is applied to each line. This handle here controls paying in or paying out. Um, usually these are some indicator lights. It looks like uh, the bulbs are out on them. That's pretty common on the bow ship since uh, so much water splashes over. It, uh, it usually damages a lot of the electronics. It, It's important to constantly check the lines and be aware of the tide. Um, if you don't tend the lines properly or there's a malfunction with the auto tensioning, then a line uh, will part if there's too much force on it. This line and this line are gonna be the two forward springs, which run up off of these two winches. This line here is a uh, inshore line, inshore headline. And it's, uh, it's actually on a bite here, which means they send out a belly in the line, put it over the uh, bollard down on the dock, and then run the eye of the line back through and onto the bit here. Then we have our offshore headlines. This is referred to as a soft line. It's not actually wound up on the winch here. It's, uh, it's on what's called the gypsy head. We refer to the line as a soft line. All right, next let's uh, head back on deck and check in on cargo operations. All right, we're at the first uh, forward crane here on the ship. This crane is currently working bay 18, and it is currently discharging cargo. So when we're working cargo operations, there's a lot of, uh, there's some paperwork that we need to reference. This is a uh, time reporting sheet. So we keep track of all the times that each crane starts, opens, closes, and uh, finishes. This is called a uh, discharge plan. This shows the entire outline of the ship. Uh, going to bay 18, you can see here, uh, this is Bay 18 above deck. Everything in red is Savannah. These are all discharges, uh, all red is discharging in Savannah. So Bay 18, I put one slash through it, meaning they're starting above deck on Bay 18. Once they finish on Bay 18, I'll put a slash the other way to make an X. That means they're done. And most likely they'll lift the hatch off and then um, start working below deck and I'll do the same pattern of one slash once they start there and a second slash once they finish. This is important, it's an easy way to keep track of uh, everything that's going on the ship so you know at all times what's done, what, what's left to be done. The last piece of paperwork is our reefer discharge plan. Reefers refer to refrigerated cargo. They're electronically powered by the ship's power um, and they're used to carry everything from chocolate, frozen fish, uh, even blood plasma. So they're very expensive, very uh, high value. The chief mate here has highlighted everything that's gonna be discharged in Savannah. So you can see here that first code is referring to uh, Salala Oman. That means it was loaded there. And then it means it's being discharged SAV in Savannah. This is the temperature of the box, 18 degrees Celsius. This is the box number. To give the position of a box on a ship, you refer to it by first the bay, then the row, and then the tier. So for example, this box right here is bay 30, row four, tier 86. Here's another look at a refrigerated cargo unit coming off of a reefer. Okay, let's take a close up look at a reefer container unit. This is the set point. This is the temperature the box is programmed to stay at. In this case, it's minus 20 degrees Celsius. The return 
minus 20 degrees Celsius is the current temperature inside the box. So this is good. This means it's in range, green light. Um, if there was any alarms on the box, this would be red or flashing red. And then this temperature here is the supply temperature. In this case, it's minus 22.5 degrees Celsius. So that's the temperature of the air pumping into the box or cooling the box. Reefer containers are the big money makers for ships, so they carry a whole lot of them. You can see this is where they plug into different receptacles here. Here you can see a longshoreman and a stevedore. The stevedore is the one with the green vest. He's in communication with the uh, crane driver. He's up in there. The longshoremen are responsible for unlashing all of the lashing rods and uh, the twist locks and then adding new twist locks and new point down to uh, the cargo holds. Usually there's one entrance on the forward end and the aft end of a cargo hold. These are called lashing rods. Turnbuckles. These are called semi-automatic twist locks and the reason they're called semi-automatic is when the container comes in here and uh, it'll automatically twist this and then you can see it locks into place here. When you're discharging cargo, this is the reason why it's semi-automatic. So you have to manually come in here, pull this up, and uh, that'll keep it unlocked so that the container can freely come out of here. That's what it looks like when it's locked in place. One of my jobs is to verify that the twist locks are all locked in place and that all of the lashing gear, such as this, is tight and secure. Shoreman is carrying a long hold here. He uses that to reach up to the far containers to unlock the twist locks. Again, they look like this. So that pull is able to reach up here, pin this, and either lock it into place or unlock it. These are called flat racks and they have a bunch of bins called gear bins on them. You can see here's a few of them gear bins. Those are kept on the ship and that's what stores all of the twist locks that we talked about earlier. So the longshoremen will use the cranes to offload these flat racks and then use a fork truck to pick up the gear bins and stage them where the cranes are going to work such as right there. That way when the container is offloaded the longshoremen can pull off the, turn, uh, the twist locks off of every corner and then when new cargo is loaded, they'll put the twist locks back on. Even though these are called container ships, they still carry a wide variety of cargo. You can see here, we got everything from giant tires to RVs, trucks. Back there, you can see different tank containers. All right, we can see one of the hatches was just opened up. So the crane just lifted the hatch cover off and placed it down there. Let's go take a closer look. It's important to periodically look over the side of the ship that's uh, against the pier and make sure that we're nicely alongside. If we're not alongside, then we need to make sure we get the ship alongside and tighten up on the lines. Looks pretty good right now. So let's take a look at the mooring arrangement back here. This is set up here as a four plus two. So we have one spring line, a second spring line, those will run forward. This is a inshore stern line, a second inshore stern line, 
and that's a offshore stern line and then the fourth offshore stern line you can see they all run back just like that those are called twin pig containers instead of one 40-foot container it's two 20-foot containers and this crane is designed to be able to pick them both up at the same time when you refer to the cargo carrying capacity of the ship uh, you refer to quantity of cargo can carry in TEUs that stands for 20-foot equivalent unit so each 20-foot equivalent unit or TEU would be uh, one of these 20-foot boxes so in this case this would be two TEUs a regular 40-foot container would also be the same as two TEUs. We're here in the cargo office. This is our healing control system. So when we're loading cargo, because cargo is not always loaded on the center line, uh, the ship will generally start to list to port or starboard. So to compensate for that, we use a healing pump, which pumps water from a tank on the port side to the tank on the starboard side or vice versa. Most modern ships, this will be automatic. So right now there's a 0.37 degree list to port. Um, usually this is programmed so that once it reaches about a degree of list, then it'll automatically pump water. So in this case, if this reaches one degree port list, then to compensate for that, pump will pump water from the port side tank, which is the number four tank, to the starboard side tank. It's important to make sure there's always enough water in the tanks so that the pump doesn't run dry. And you also wanna make sure there's not too much water in the tank. Otherwise, if you continue to pump water in there, it'll start to overflow out of a vent on the deck. And we like to avoid that. All right, let's take a ride up the elevator up to the bridge. bridge so at the end of watch we're required to fill out the official logbook here some uh, weather information here we write in some of those times from that log sheet including the uh, first move first hatch 